My notes look wonderful. They're literally just scribbles. They are scribbles. Well, that that works. I mean, it's you know, the same way when I type things out. It's noop, yeep, doop, yep, and that's it. And people's like, I can't read this. And I'm like, well, you know, let me translate for you. It's like this. It's a hidden language that you don't need to know. It's called shorthand. <laughs> Back in the day, we used to do it. All right, so, okay, just whenever you want to start and talk about, you want to talk about Dark Phoenix first and get that out of the way? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I guess you remember it a little bit better than I do. I have my vague notes, but do you want to go over the, the plot? Um, so. How did she end up being a thing? I remember something about. Oh yeah, they the had, car accident, I think. Or So, um as a kid, she, um what's her name? Oh my god, Dark Phoenix, that's her name. Totally. <laughs> uh Jean <laughs> Grey. I think that, that I swear we watched this movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who is Jean Grey is the right answer, Alex. <laughs> Ah, ding, ding, ding. Um, whenever she was a kid, she couldn't control her powers, and um, her parents were listening to music. And she's like, "Well, I want to listen to something else." So she was inadvertently changing the channel in the car, twisting the knob, and they're like, "Jean, are you doing that?" And then it ends up causing a car crash. Um, so the mom dies, and then her dad blames her. She thinks the dad dies. Um, and then she gets taken in by. But really, Dad just didn't want her. And then, <laughs> oh well, I mean, I, isn't this like the entire like purpose of our movie reviews? Is we talk about the entire movie? Yeah, that's fine. Today's okay. spoilers alert. We only did that for Endgame because it was yeah, requested. Yeah, because okay. yeah, it was kind of requested. They were like, "Don't do that," and, and I was like, "Okay, uh, I'm okay." Well, you know what? I mean. So, if I had to give this movie a a rating 1 through 10, I'd give it a 2, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah, and, and that's what we want is honesty, because, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has really, like, gone through and given it a terrible score. It, uh, you know, it really, they really has, and here's, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why. I mean, here it is, it is another... Re retelling of the thing we saw what less than ten years ago, yeah. and then it's been taken another director. And the question is two reasons I think the film is made. Here's here's two reasons. Number one, Marvel wants its property back, right? So to f screw with Marvel, let's make another one so we can keep the property. Number one. Number two. Uh, Jennifer Garner says, I'm just too big for X-Men, and I want to move on, so can I die in this, so we can have, like, be freed of my contract? And they were like, okay, we got to do this, we got to keep the property rights and get rid of Jennifer Garner. And boom, you get this movie, so there you go. And if I'm wrong, people, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, you know where you can find me. On right? the internet. Exactly, on the internet. You get... You, Put your hate comments below. Like, it, and I'm just theorizing, you guys. I'm theorizing. And first of all, you got a director who's gone through a sex scandal. He, he he had to get rid of. You know, he was chasing little boys. Then you had you know Jennifer Gardner, and then we'll get into his yes. stories. Then you got like, hey Alex, let's not talk about that. Jennifer Gardner, who uh, <laughs> who wants out of a contract. And you've got a production company who wants to keep their uh, keep their property. So you got all these three things going on here, and so it really takes away from let's focus on a good story, and you know give or take of what you know Justice League was and everything and all the criticism he gets, they tried. They were focused on trying to get a good movie out there. This one, there was so many. Th there's so many things going on that you're just not. You're not going to get something very good or satisfactory. It's like showing up to work one day with all this going through your mind. But if you want to proceed, who wants to go in and 
try to explain this story to everybody. You know, anytime. <laughs> um, aliens. Aliens. Um, yes, aliens. Um, at some point, aliens come and are like, yo, so this power that wasn't even actually a solar flare, um, yeah, this is a power that we need to take back our planet or something. And it's like, why are they bringing aliens into this? Oh, those aliens! We were talking about this <laughs> earlier, and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, but let's just wait till the review. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm gonna talk about aliens, and I'm like, did we see the same movie? Yeah, well, let's talk about aliens, because uh, yeah, I'm 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 game with that. So you want to start with story first or uh, aliens? <laughs> well, Alex is on aliens, so I guess we're. I think aliens. I think I think it ties. I think it can kind of tie in the story. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll go, we'll start with aliens. So. I really didn't understand why they brought aliens into this because it's a superhero movie essentially and it's like it's kind of two different genres that if done right can mix but they did not do it right yeah so, Marvel's done it several times successfully uh, yeah but yeah it was kind of like I see how it fit in but it I guess it could have been done a little bit better aliens but yeah i guess we can move on with the plot after we explain the alien yeah where were we we talked about the car accident um and then uh uh the dad brings her to this like orphanage school and is like take her and the guy's like i will and that's how it went i swear i'm gonna just look at my notes and stop talking <laughs> okay <laughs> Car flips and sets fire. Oh, wait, no, it says she's fine. I can't even read my notes. Great. Yeah, the car flipped, and then she was the only one who didn't even get injured because her powers protected her. Yeah, she went, like, violet incredible and, like, shielded herself. Like, violet from the Incredibles? Am I crazy? Don't look at me like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. <laughs> I like the Incredibles. I'm sorry. I like it. I like the that Incredibles. I like when they take the Pulp Fiction. Uh, yeah, do the Pulp Fiction vocals and they put it into the Samuel L. Jackson character in the Incredibles. That's hilarious. All right, so nice. she's at the orphanage. Uh, is it like one of them? Is it one of them ones where they try to you know like get rid of the mutant out of you, or is it like a Good orphanage. Um, no. It was uh, Dr. Xavier's. Uh, so it was basically an orphanage for. Were they all mutants? Yes. I'm guessing so. But at the same time, I don't think they'd be like Charles Xavier. Look at this orphan boy, and he'd be like, "No, not good enough." Like, no, I can't see him turning someone mutants. away. He literally went out and uh, found mutants just That's to. That's true. Yeah. Uh, bring back in so that they actually had a place to belong. How sweet. But yeah, and then she basically grows up in that orphanage on this team um, with these people. And she had been made to forget everything that had happened so that she could keep her power under control. So, Charles Xavier is a bad man in this movie. And that's why he was like, yeah, your dad's dead. Instead of like, yeah, your dad doesn't want you. Dad is. <laughs> but um, then they end up uh, getting on a rocket and going up into space to try to save these um. Aliens. Uh, no, wrong. They weren't aliens. No, they were astronauts. Oh yeah, they were saving the astronauts. Um, from the solar flare that wasn't actually a solar flare. It was the power that Jean Grey ends up taking inside of herself so that she can save everyone, but she can't. She then can't control her power because her memories that were being blocked by Charles Xavier uh, were basically dissolving, and so she couldn't control her power anymore. 
So. Absorbs solar fl- solar blast. That. Yeah. And I also wrote Evan Peters' heart. <laughs> and so, yeah. and so we get the so we get the beginning of the uh, Dark Phoenix, and and so where do we go from there? Well, she absorbs the solar blast, and everyone's like, "Okay, she's dead for sure. Like, there's no way." And then. Uh, what happens? Do they end up going back into the ship to, like, you know, investigate? And she's pretty much fine unless she passed yeah. out or something like um, that. But, you know, they bring her back to, like, and do, like, lab tests on her. And she's alive and she's Perfectly fine. fine. Physically, yeah. at least. Um, but then Charles Xavier can't start to not be able to, like, read her mind and, uh, like, see into her head. So he's like, something's going on. So then he kind of, he gets into that one room that everyone knows, um, where he has his the machine. Memory room is what I like to call it. The big room where you're seeing into your head. Basically. Um, and then, let's see. So he does that and then he like tries to push into her mind. Um, and he can see that all of uh, the blockers that he had put on her memories were being like torn down by this power. So he realizes what's going on, and then she leaves to try to um, find where she feels like she truly belongs or something. And then the uh, story goes on from there. I was reading my notes, and I totally just like blanked about what you just said. Where are we now? Where are we now? I met. I missed it. Um, it she's not, leaving the orphanage. She's like, I'm going to go on my own. Oh, okay. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, I can't get all these powers. I don't want to hurt you guys. <laughs> and then, uh, is this the point where she goes to see the other guy who was at one point part of the... What's his name? Magneto? Does Magneto. she go see Magneto now? Uh, I think so, yes. Yeah? Let's just go rewatch the movie. <laughs> yeah right. It's been like two weeks. I was sick last week and we didn't. He was in Mexico, so we didn't do the review. But um, yeah. Oops. I, does she go? She ends up at one point going and like seeing her father. Was that the point Let's that see. now, or does she go to Magneto first? I she remember. definitely went to Magneto first. Magneto first. Okay. So this, and he tells her like, GTFO. Dude, yeah, because like, basically leave. like. She's talking to this guy and everything, and then they send two helicopters to, I don't know if they were, were they there for her? Yeah. I guess they were, and she wrecks these two helicopters and, like, destroys their whole, like, encampment and everything. And Magneto has to use, like, every ounce of his power to be able to keep one of the helicopters from hitting everybody. Yeah, pretty and he much. Can barely do it. And then after she does all this, whatever, he's, like, telling her to leave. She's like, you said you protected mutants here. And he's like, bro, you broke our home, like. Yeah, we're protecting go. them from you. Yeah, pretty much. So. Yeah. Yeah. Magneto's always then, liked Magneto. He's, like, really a good character. Even more interesting oh, yeah. than uh, Professor Xavier. I think he really was well done in the... I, when they go back in time, 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 that was a really good one because the, the Magneto character was really good. It makes me more like him and understand him and everything like that. But, you know, I mean, they keep on criticizing Marvel's villains of not being that interesting. He is very interesting. Oh, I love this. And he was a good guy this time, which I really, yeah. I really like, because he was still fighting on the same side. Yeah. But he was trying to do it for the welfare of other mm-hmm. mutants instead of just like, yo, I don't like you. I really like his character. I have, uh, whenever we went to Wizard World St. Louis, one of uh, my friends, remember Mr. Brothers from the fo- DC Marvel photo shoot we did? I think so. The two, I forgot their last name. I It's the Carr Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, well, one of them cosplays Magneto, and it's, uh, like, a really good cosplay. They're awesome. But, yeah, it's a really good character. Um, What other characters? Evan Peters was great. I love him. And then 
I, I really liked whenever Storm came on to the uh, big screen, Alex goes, she reminds me of Kanye West. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Dude, what? Kanye West. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's what I wrote right there. I said, Alex about storms. I said, Kanye West. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but uh, one basically, thing, sorry, go ahead. Uh, one thing I didn't really like was the girl who can, um, that was always like on Magneto's side who could like uh, turn into somebody else. She was on the X Men this time, and it was like, why? Yeah, um, yeah, the, you have to go back to the other series, and like I said, that's the whole Jennifer Gardner situation. Because, Jennifer Lawrence, or Jennifer Lawrence, whatever her name is. Um, Jennifer's, they're all the same, uh, basically. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're pretty much, you know, they're pretty much all divas. But when you get down to it, it's like. You know, I want to. I'm too big for this crap. I need to move on. You know, get me out of this. Lord help me. You know, if I do another one of these things, I'll be top cutter. He's like, nobody even knows it's you. <laughs> Not even of the time. It's like people are sitting there. You know, it's like with uh, Logan's character. I mean, you knew who that was. You know, and, and it really mattered. He made the difference to who Logan was and Wolverine and all that. It, nobody gives a care who Mystique is. I mean, there's not, like, unless oh, just find a little, uh, some body. And, of course, with CGI nowadays, you can fix all the body stuff. You know, just someone who oh. looks good with blue spray paint, you know, and whatever. So, I mean, it's not like the... I mean, it's like, that's what made me so mad. And the reason why they say the downfall of the X-Men, it was how important they made that character like it was so important. You know, like, Mystique is, oh, it's the whole key of this all. I thought Jean Grey was it. No, Mystique is more important. How? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, yeah, granted. Exactly. I mean, granted. I mean, yeah. it's a great power. It's a com what, like a chameleon. It's a great power. But it's, oh, yeah. but the thing is, I think with reason why, you know, like the Dark Phoenix is kind of like, uh, you know, what they're dealing with uh, that you know in the infinity crisis and all that not the infinity crisis but with um the avengers and endgame and all that kind of stuff you're kind of in that same boat you know and even though they had the apocalypse the day before you're you're finding an entity that is really really powerful but you know to say that mystique you know in the past movies were like oh it's a key, they're the key to it all you know like and of course i, I blame the the whole star wars in thing when they started having Darth Vader as a little kid and all that stuff, you know, I blame that. Oh, Darth Vader is the whole key of it. No, Jar Jar Binks is the whole key of it all. No. It's... Jar Jar Binks is uh, amazing. OP. Exactly. He's the key of it all. And, yeah, he's the key of all because he's he's actually uh, Dark Sidious and all that. You know, there's theories behind that. Okay, so we're um, getting to where are we at. We got to We've got Jean Grey leaving the orphanage, and so we got to get into the big battle. So how do we get yeah, there? Yeah, well, she got, she got kicked out of uh, Magneto's, and then she's like, I'm going to go see my dad because he's alive. <laughs> and then he's all like, why did you come here? And then oh, he's so like, rage, sad face. Yeah, he's like, do you want something to drink? And she's like, no. <laughs> I want love from my father. And he's like, nah. Nah, I don't love you no more. <laughs> you yeah. dead to me. Somebody and has then, daddy uh, issues. Yeah, all the X-Men end up like outside of her dad's house. And they're like, we're here for you. And she's like, nah. I don't like none of you. Basically, and she's like, I'm so confused. My dad doesn't love me. And Rar kills and Mystique. Then, and yeah. then everyone was like, oh. <laughs> that was it yeah just like that we were all like then she flies away and then it goes to like a bank <laughs> I don't even know where she goes but oh, yeah no, she, 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 she's like she's like mystique dies and she's like flies away basically and everyone else was like 
It was great. By the way, in the movie theater, we were the only two in this whole theater, so we were like yelling at the screen the whole time. <laughs> I did a vlog if you want it. Yeah, yeah. He, he did. I would take. Though. I would take a look at that. That's the same thing that we deal with, like when uh, they were talking about. Well, I mean, the movie tanked. I mean, obviously, it was a not a success, and uh, and like I've seen worse movies. I've definitely seen worse movies. Right, right, and and we'll grant it that. Uh, but you, I mean, it's just one of those things. It's like I, the two movies that tanked. I mean, they should have thought about. Yeah, that's going to tank. Okay, we're retelling the Phoenix again. We're retelling Godzilla again, and those were the two movies that tanked. And it's like, okay, now you're retelling Child's Play. That might work because it's been long enough for us to forget about the original one. Yeah. And then you've, you're you adding new talent and doing a restart. I don't know how where that goes and all that. I'm to the point, I wish they would come out new stuff. Uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, it's it's really tough because as long as you got the the bearded uh, 40 year olds who go to the theater and <laughs> gets the big tub of popcorn <laughs> it's like they control the industry right now on rotten tomatoes so this is this is what you're going to watch okay you're going to watch this okay and it's you know and you're like no please god stop it you know i don't see another dark phoenix storytelling and can i share something about you know when i was younger about when the dark phoenix story comes out or we got to the ending yet yeah. you know when yeah. it first came out in the the early 80s um you have to understand when x-men was a failure when it first came out and the reason was because there was no really protagonist and the important thing of a story is to have that fish out of water they had iceman cyclops beast and angel those were your force for force for first four characters and they kind of squiggle Jean Grey in. We gotta have a girl. Okay. Okay, that's fine. And so there was a lot of comedy that worked, you know, like Bobby was the funny man and all that and Cyclops and they, and they had, and it was a little bit back in those days, that's when racism was still a, kind of a thing when it first came out. So there was a little, you know, ties to that, you know, about racism and everything like that. But the thing flopped because, the comic book flopped because it had nobody to rediscover who these weirdos were you know and so then they redid it in uh like right before the 80s like 1979 they called it the x-men giant book and what this was was they created a story called pride of the x-men and what worked was kitty pride was now the fish out of the water the protagonist that was joining the group and and so instead of just saying okay here's these character now we have an eyes uh, through Kitty Pride, like you should do in a movie, to find out and to rediscover these weirdos, you know, who, why they th are this way. Because here's the thing, the best thing about protagonists is you can't have them through the thought balloons all the time. You have to have someone to, you know, figure out. You can't say they're, you know, I'm Wolverine, I'm going to go and I'm going to kill things, you know. If he did talks to himself, he looks like a crazy person. But if he's talking to Kitty Pride, you can discover who, you know, Wolverine is. You can discover Cyclops is. So the, the thing started going really big. Then MTV comes along in the 80s, and they sort of kind of uh, moved it in together with, like, MTV. And that's the whole thing. Like, Spider-Man still was kind of for kids. And you had, uh, what was another one that was for kids, I would say, more or less? Um... Anyways, there were still comic books out there that were kid-friendly and still had a little bite to them. But the X-Men was basically, it was for geared to teenagers. It was, uh, it had that MTV feel, it had all this stuff, and it attracted you. And so when the Dark Phoenix came around, they came up with this character named Rachel. And see, that's what's so interesting that they've never added Rachel into these stories. Rachel was the incarnate of the dark phoenix she was what you hated about it and he had something there that gene gray would be you know gene gray was dead and then rachel was the reincarnate and all this kind of thing and it's like why don't they explore that because that was the most interesting part of the whole story and it's like the x that's interesting because did right. you see the new dark phoenix movie well li uh, not really i mean well, at the end, they were literally like, she, 
basically they said she evolved beyond this world. Right. Like she turned yeah. into a phoenix, and they're like, she evolved beyond this world and disappears. And I'm like, is she a Pokemon? Is she <laughs> dead? What happened? Yeah. It, right. Right. So, and, and and that's that's right. what I. Yeah. I I don't know. It's like. <laughs> Again, why are you retelling the story? It didn't work on the third. When you got to the third movie, that's basically the Dark Phoenix movie, right? And then you get... And what we get is we get this argument between Wolverine and, of course, Cyclops dies. Uh, Wolverine and X-Men, I mean, Professor Xavier, are having this argument. And it's like, I'm not going to pay $5 to debate watch uh you know gene luke Picard debate with uh wolverine that just isn't <laughs> what i go to the movies for and it, it it is because they're they're sitting there arguing sitting there they're standing and arguing and xavier uh, can't stand but they're arguing over the fate of gene gray and it's so stupid because it's like this is like because he's sitting there trying to tell him she's bad boy and I had to control her and he's like what gives you the right to control her and he's like I don't have to I don't have to justify my means I'm like yeah you don't dude I mean this is like bringing an atomic bomb here and you put it into a lead box yeah I, I'm all for it because it's like I don't want the atomic bomb to explode you know and you know you know what I'm saying and so they're sitting there arguing about. It. There's no need for this argument. She's if she's dangerous, we need to accept the fact that she's dangerous. But then you retell the story to hold on the rights, I guess, or whatever. Yes, you're you're, you're getting in a territory where people are not interested anymore. You kind of got to go back to the whole. Like you were talking about, you didn't even feel like it was a superhero film, did you? Not really. Mm -mm. And that's what's kind of big. I, I just don't know. I, and for them, to me, if, you know, Marvel takes it over, I think they need to go back to uh, 1979 and say, all right, you got a fish out of water, and let's rediscover these weirdos. And that's how you're going to save it. Because other than that, we're just... Uh, because the whole meaning, the real meaning reason why the mutants and all that was so attractive... Attractive because you had people who grabbed onto something like they were being picked on by bullies or whatever, and that's the reason why X Men became so popular. Like you know, if you were a nerd or if you were black or if you were homosexual or something like that, those things you kind of uh, you know attach. Or if you play D and D, uh, <laughs> those things you attach to those characters because you're like. You know, you were getting beat up in the hall every day. You were getting the swirlies and everything like that. And you could put yourself into Bobby's place or the Psychop's place or even Wolverine's place and say, you know, yeah, you know, even though, you know, I've got all these powers, I shouldn't abuse them to go against my bullies, but I should use them to help humanity because you have all these gifts, you know. And that's, I mean, that's what it boils down to. And... How do you make that fresh? I mean, if you told this, if you retold the X Men right now, where would you start? Where would you do to make it better to, you know, to save it, to even incorporate it back into the Marvel universe? Um. Hmm. To save it, God, I don't. I don't really know. I guess one thing I noticed that I would do differently about this movie is there was... Honestly, nobody was as important as Gene. Yeah. And I wanted to see... I want to see more of Storm. I want to see more of Peter. I want to see more of Cyclops. I want to see more of these other cool characters and not her pouting about her life the entire movie. That would have been nice. Yeah. That would have been nice. <laughs> um, I yeah, it really was, and uh, one thing that I noticed while watching the movie, I, I couldn't figure out who was a good guy, but I, I feel like maybe that's just kind of how the uh, X-Men universe might be, because everyone's kind of like, just a little more, I, I, it's not as 
Disney, has their it's dark not side. as much of a Disney line to good guy and bad guy kind of thing, yeah. you know? Like, they're all a little more... They have character. They They have their, you know, dark sides but they stay good kind of thing. But I, I, I wanted to see more of Storm. That's what's upsetting. Right. So you're saying I wanted to see So you're saying that whole whining about my life thing is getting old. And I have to it you know something and a lot of people will uh, you know, criticize me that I hate Alan Moore's uh Watchmen series and if and I know a lot of Alan Moore fans are out there, but it's because Alan Moore can't you know discuss america he doesn't understand america he writes england really well but that's my perception because i'm american maybe he's not good at writing english people but i think he writes english really well but the story with he did with v vendetta is awesome my biggest problem with watchmen why i hate it is it's the same thing that you're talking about is at the end the girl is more concerned that her father was somebody else and it's like you're supposed to be a flipping superhero. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me give you an example. What I, what reason why I think that's stupid? Because, all right. For instance, like let's say I was, uh, you know, I was in high school and I was a good basketball player. Now I go to college. I get picked. Now I'm the best of a thousand. All right. Then you get picked as an NBA. You're best of a hundred thousand. So there's something inside you that makes you a little bit, you know what I'm saying, stronger because you kind of have evolved. I mean, like some of us, if we stay in a bubble, we don't ever grow up. You know, like me, I'm still 12 years old. So with, you know, because I've stayed in a bubble all my life. So basically, it's the same thing I feel like with if you were a superhero, you, you know, like an X Men, you were picked because you know, like in Men in Black, um, you were the pick because you were the best of the best of the best. He said, and then you know, Will Smith is like, uh, "Why are we here, C sir? Can I answer that? Because we were the best of the best of the best." Yeah, but that doesn't answer my question. Why are we here? Because you were here because you were picked. You know, special. You had something that was that had gotten that has gotten you there, and you evolve among stupid stuff. Yeah, I expect a fourteen-year-old girl who's never had a job in her life crying about stuff. Why? Because she's a fourteen-year-old girl who's never had taxes taken out. She's never had a job. She's never had a boyfriend, and she's sitting there crying about stupid stuff like you know the whatever it is yeah I expect that I don't expect an adult woman I don't expect an adult male who's gone through hell and back to cry about stuff like that if I'm wrong mm -hmm. tell me I'm wrong I mean if I'm wrong yeah maybe I'm wrong she was constantly on about like she's like I don't belong here and it's like you obviously do but if you want to make yourself an outcast and kill all your friends be my guest yeah, 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 yeah. The blue for mutants, and she's like, "Oh, yeah. I'm a mutant. I don't belong." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Bobby, you, you realize the irony of what you're saying. Yeah, it, that's that's just just what my take is, and reason why you know that stuff is getting old. I mean, one time that stuff might have flown, but and like you were talking about the good versus evil thing, it's because we've got more mature audience. You know, we've got people who realize that. People are just don't born be Dr. Evil, you know. We understand that now. It's like people just don't come out of the room going, Now give me my martini. I'm going to go kill James Bond. You know, you just don't pop out of the wound like that. Yeah, there is, you know, well, exactly. And and every every per, every villain in real life thinks they're doing the right thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the truth. I mean, it's like, you're, you know, we, you know we've dealt with really crazy moms. Oh. Thanos was a really good interpretation exactly. of that. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And that's what Magneto is, is a great interpretation of that as well. You don't come out there just, I'm evil, guys. Here I am. You know, Star Wars was really simplistic, you know, regarding yeah. that. But when you get the to. The dark side. <laughs> yeah, that stuff. Literally. That stuff it just is not going to fly in uh, 2019. You just, you can't go out there and say, well, I chose the dark side. Why? Because I had, well, th their outfits were a lot cooler. 
they had cooler outfits and you know really because always the villains always had better looking outfits and then and then yeah. of course there you go. exactly speaking God, player. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. The <laughs> so do we have any spoilers for people? Uh it don't sucks. watch it. <laughs> I I I understand where you guys are coming from and and let's like I said it could have been so much worse to be honest. It could be, like yeah. it, the effects were good, the casting was good. Right. The story was terrible. The better writing, uh, I mean, as far as technical, was there anything bad technically wise that threw you away from the movie? Uh, the fact that Storm wasn't Kanye West <laughs> was pretty upsetting. <laughs> oh, what? Um, Alex was on to something about casting there. I think we should have him cast the next X-Men movie. Um, Cyclops, you know how in the other movies he had his, like, his, uh, visor. Glasses. And, Visor's a better word. Glasses? <laughs> his glasses? But then he also had his red, like, just sunglasses that also would protect people from not getting shot by his eyes. Um, the entire movie, even whenever like they were in casual clothes, he still had the visor. Yeah, <laughs> and that kind of bothered me because it's like he was like, "I am Cyclops. I wear visor." Yeah, basically. Yeah, he was like showing off like the fact that he was Cyclops the entire time. Yeah. Um, well, and and you said the acting. Was there any any bad acting? I wouldn't say there was any actual like bad acting. No, I feel like they... Well, the thing is, they had a good cast. Right. Yeah. So with a good cast comes good acting. A lot of them were very... Uh, Experienced like, yeah. actors. Yeah. So they knew how to portray the roles correctly. Yeah. Especially Jennifer Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Lawrence, Charles, the guy who played Charles Xavier, yeah. Cyclops stayed in character. You know, Dark Phoenix, she was cast well also. Jennifer's. She was cast well. Jennifer's do good. All Jennifer's, they're drama queens. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, but I, I think it was. I wanted to see more of Evan Peters because I love him, but. Man, I wish Tom Holland did a better job. In... <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, I just love Spider Man and the X Men, dude. He's my favorite X Men. <laughs> there should be there should be some Spider Man there. That really shows. I and and that's yeah. something that I'm hoping that they'll get this Marvel franchise to own X Men, so you know it can be a thing. So, who's your daddy?